What's up everybody? Today I have the new Cervelo Vespero. This is a bike that caught my attention. Very, very new bike, it just came out. We weren't able to make a video pre-release. The Cars Crusher race is tomorrow. We've been really, really busy, but that doesn't stop me from wanting to build the bike. This bike is a, a port. Isn't that weird? A little bit. Cervelo is supposed to be the dentist brand, I thought, right? Isn't this supposed to be for all the dentist people? Yeah, and yeah. the Ferrari drivers. This is a Ferrari driver's bike. The Cervelo naming convention, um, they have bikes like this that are just the name of the bike, and then they do like the the five. So this is not a five series Cervelo, and you can't get this in the five series. I don't know if that's a bad thing. This frame MSRP is for $2,500, and it's legit. It's got plenty of tire clearance for what is a racing gravel bike, but it also has like big transmission. Yeah, I know I've complained a lot about gravel bikes not having transmission, and whenever I saw this one, I mean, obviously every bike that comes out now is gonna have it, but we're still not in a world where every bike has it yet, so I'm still noteworthy in my opinion. This bike, for the price of it, the Sparrow was already, I'm pretty sure, Cervelo's best-selling bike. So, in my eyes, I think this is a big win from the brand. They didn't destroy the identity of this bike at all, and they just updated it, and you can actually buy one of these. Where would you buy one, Jackson? TheBicycleStation.com. Yeah, check it out, TheBicycleStation.com. As always, if you like our content, please support us. The best way to do that is to buy stuff from our website, or if you're looking for a custom build like the one we're about to do in this video today, reach out, we'll have all the links below and um, all the ways you can do that, Instagram, email, whatever works for you. This right here kind of looks like a water slide. Whoosh! I think that's, an, I think that's some aerodynamic <laughs> the bomb there. This is a Cervelo's kind of non-circular steer tube. Do you see how it's not a circle? That thing's like a circle with a flat spot. Yeah, it's like a flat spot. It's like a, it's like got a big dent in it. The, the bike has the ability to run a normal stem and they, they ship out some top caps and spacers. This was, this was purchased as a frame set. If you buy it as a complete, comes with these. And it looks like this. Integrated cable route through the headset bearing, but it's a normal stem and a normal bar. Although it's the same, the bar is compatible both ways. We'll get into that in a second. This bar is compatible with what we're gonna do, which is the integrated uh, Cervelo cockpit. I'm gonna pull the stem off. This is the aftermarket carbon Cervelo stem. They also make this in an aluminum stem. Somebody should come up with a word for cables running through the stem, whatever those are called. Um, internal stem internal cables. Something. And so what you do is you hit us up, and you can do this on the Aspero, the Soloist, and I'm pretty sure any of the Cervelo bikes uh, that have the dented, the dented steer tube, a... Uh, that thing's clean. Yeah, you buy a preload piece, and then you also buy a top cap, and then you also buy a spacer set. But uh, guess what, Jackson? What? We don't need no spacers today. Dang it. So we're gonna we're gonna slam this bike. The stack height. Big slammer. The stack height on this bike is I'm pretty sure something like 380. I am literally just guessing and I'm gonna look it up in a second and I'll get back to you on what it actually is. But um, I've already looked into this and we're gonna I know we're gonna slam it, so we're gonna do that. My vision for this, we're building a very premium bike today, but like it's kind of funny, like the frame is so affordable. It's uh, it's weird to say this, but like the wheel, my wheels cost more than this entire frame does. Uh, I I really commend Cervelo for. I mean, twenty five hundred dollars is not like I'm not trying to say it's like cheap cheap, but like it's way cheaper than a lot of other gravel frames on the market right now. The only one that I could find, uh, not that I could, I didn't do that much research, but. The only one that I know of that I can confidently say is cheaper that is a carbon frame. The check check. Check check. The check check. The check the check. Trek, check checkpoint SL is. Checkpoint? Yeah, the checker uh, is $2,400 for the SL frame. I don't think on the consumer Trek website you can see all the frames that are available, but they do sell the SL frame for $2,400. The the checkpoint though is um, is getting kind of old now. Still, it's still like a really good bike. I rode a checkpoint for two years. There's a couple of videos that we did about it, but it's missing the UDH. 
But it wasn't a big deal then. It was, the transmission didn't exist. Dang it. But UDH did. Tre shame on Trek. I've always gotten that and specialized, but shame on Trek for not putting UDH on that bike. They should have. It would have been awesome. It would have. My normal reamer tool, I don't think is going to work on this because it's uh, not a round shape. Got the, they got the dent. And I want to be clear, I like the dent. I'm excited that we can do a integrated cockpit on this thing. Um, and you and you don't have to. You, you don't have to be like me. The complete bikes start at $3,200 for like a Shimano GRX. Ram, the Apex Axis build is like $4,500. It caps out somewhere, I think five or 55. And you get a reserve wheel set with a rival Axis drivetrain. I have no clue uh, if this is going to be easy or hard. It's going to be hard. Oopsie. I'm gonna give it a mid. That's a mid. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a mid. How are we gonna get the hose out of this? Pull it back through. Uh-oh. Fishing? Question mark? Question mark. There we go. Minor inconvenience. Mid. Mid. Yeah. Well, that's a big fish you caught there. So the frame looks like they thought about this too. Like clearly we're like, we want your brake to work. You see that? Little things, y'all. The spike is, they thought about this spike. What do you think of this color? The peaches and cream. You ruined what I was gonna say. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say it looks like a peach. You know what the like, I don't know what they called, like the popsicle thingies? Yeah. Like, like orangey and yeah. that's what this looks like. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like, I thought. Uh oh. What are those called? <laughs> Comment below. Comment below what you would call that. This is hard. It'll be okay. Oh, I forgot to fix the. Dang it. You wanna bolt these on before you start to like run them through because then you'll know how long of a hose you have to work with it's always good to know i would argue it's essential to know since we're like wiring it up to like a perfect fit situation sound here. like we're electricians over here i think we are oh we should talk about the mics oh yeah the mics yeah, we got a mic y'all we're not using it right now. check it out i we got these dji mics and I was gonna use it, and then I realized that it doesn't work with the iPhone filming app. So you have to download like a new filming app. And I was like, we don't got time for that today. So in the next upcoming videos, we'll definitely have a mic. But I'm, today, I'm I apologize, out. not quite yet. Um, need to do a little bit of practice before we attempt a microphone situation. We gotta do the sins before we do the full sins. Gotta do the sins. I don't think it's gonna be long enough. Like it's gonna like go through the stem and then it, like that's all we're gonna get. What if we just use this floor? Well, where, where do you get that from? I thought it was on the floor from something else. That was like a magic trick. It was, it was. All right, so we'll undo this one real quick and uh, get the longer length hose in this fork. I like this. This is like- I just like the blue. I want it just for the blue. Jackson really wants one of these. Jackson literally just bought a gravel bike and then this came out like like four days later. And he was just like, dang it. Yeah. So this is like, so far looks like to be like my favorite internal cable routing situation. Look at how easy this is. Wozers. That's a new word. Is it? I don't know. I'll have to use the dictionary. If that's even a thing anymore. Our dictionary is a thing. Do you are you still in high school or are you graduate yet? Mid. Jackson's told me he's graduated high school like four different times. And I'm just like, I don't believe him anymore. Like, I've, I've graduated classes, you know? That doesn't count as, like, graduating all of it. Just so we're clear. Dang it. I'm not trying to pick sides here, y'all. That's not my intention. But I will say, out of all of the internal cable routing stems I've worked on, this is uh, easily the best, the easiest one to do. Like, Hands down. Hands down. Yeah, this is like super chill. It's like, I don't have to like use any sort of like tools. No tools, people. Just shove it up in well, there. Well, the stem, the, the hole in the stem is so big. What I'm doing right now is just making sure I put the right hoses on the right side. So this is the front brake. So you want that to go to the rear brake? The rear brake. 
I think this is the only bike I wouldn't want to put in a microwave. Dang. Hey, look, it even tells you where to, what to do with it. I'd put that in a microwave. Do you microwave. think it could fit any other way, though? Like, could you do it this way? I don't know. I don't feel like you should try. Like, like I love that they're telling you what's up, you know, but like, I just don't know how you would screw this up. I'm like, oh, I'm actively trying and it's like... That does not look straight. It can only go in one way. It's literally like a unique shape. Big uniqueness on this Cervelo. Here, let me hold. Whatever this bike is. The Sparrow. That's right. The Sparrow. The bike that I hate. You're just jealous, dude. I know. This has been chill. This is chill to build. Mid. Mid. No, it's chill. Oh, it's a chill mid. Mid chill? Well, I guess the, you're right. The the fork not having a tube in it was mid, but it wasn't a big deal. Is this the best gravel bike on the market before you ride it? I think it's one of the most interesting bikes that you could look at financially. Dang. Like, like whenever you're like, uh, whenever you're like shopping for a gravel bike, first of all, you gotta have the UDH. Have to. Yeah. Shifting transmission on gravel is even better than shifting it on a mountain bike because your cadence is higher. The The problem that some people have where it shifts slower doesn't exist. It just has amazing shifting at all times. So, because the way that the cassette works is it's got the narrow wide ramps, right Jackson? Oh, yeah. So like as you're pedaling a gravel bike with a higher cadence, it just shifts, it shifts super fast. It's the best. That thing is it. Yeah. So. Definitely a major benefit to have UDH on a gravel bike. Just as important, I think, as having it on a mountain bike, if you wanted to know. And if you didn't, you know now. Yeah, if you didn't, what are you doing? How did you find our channel? Yeah, comment below. Comment below how you found our channel. This video is gonna be the most commented on video. No way, whenever we gave away the RSL handlebar, that was like the comment competition. Dang it. We're gonna start doing more stuff like that. I think we need to give one of those specialized hats away. Which one? Like the one that's on your head. If you would like to wear the same hat that me and Trey wear every day, comment down below. Um, what should we ask everybody? What were we asking people? That's a lot. Are you gonna be in the video? Jibs, are you building a bike? Sleepy. She looks so tired. She almost fell asleep in the car so many times. And I, I, I don't know how she's still awake. She was just running around in the woods. Okay. She went into a creek. Wow. Big creek stopped Jibs. Jib, is that your bike? So before we put the bar on, we want to make sure we get this, uh... What is that junk? The computer mount. You don't need one of those. Yes, you do. So that hooks into there. That's fancy. It's really nice, actually. Luxury. Luxury. Jibby's not happy right now. She wants to ride the bike. She's so happy now. <laughs> Whoa! You gotta go faster, Jimmy. Here, let me show you the route. Oh, we have a route. Oh boy. Is it on Shava yet? <laughs> Jib. All right, how do you win the hat? All right, so what you do. What, what do you do? Here, so you open the YouTube on your phone, all right? You search up the bicycle station. You watch this video, all right? And you gotta comment. They're already watching the video. Well, I'm telling them how they got here. Okay. So that's how you got here. And then, so what you gotta do is you gotta comment, all right? Is that it? No. no. Hear me out, all right? Okay. You gotta comment the funniest thing you think of. And you're the judge, though. Uh oh. All right. Jackson's gonna pick the winner based off of what he thought was the funniest comment. Make sure to comment down below if you like this hat. So one other thing that makes me really like this bike is that other stem integration systems kind of like really constrict where the hose can go. Headset integration systems. This one is like chill. Like I can just pull this through. Chill, Like bro. super chill. This is a chill, chill situation. So the hoses do not run into the handlebar. They actually run underneath. Um, I'm gonna give that a chill rating also. We don't have to ride it through the handle. Chill. Chill. And then, so they just kind of like, I would say this is an improvement over any other handlebar integration system. I mean, like, it's gonna look the same, but it's like, like, look at how much easier that is, you know? That thing's like it or something, dude. It's some what? It's it. Gotta make the funniest comment to win the hat. A week from the video posting, we'll pick a winner. Uh -huh. What is this? Let's look at this. Uh-oh. Whoa. Whoa. Why is there a hole right there? Yeah, what's underneath here? Like, right. what is that? 
Ming Cycle Industry Co. Ltd. What is that? I don't know. Cervelo. 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 Made in China. 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 Yep, I don't want it. Do you think my new bike is made in China? Yes. Shoot. Tram. does not know the correct chain length for gravel bike transmissions, so we're just free. We're just, we're just doing it live. All right. But you want to put the setup key in A for your gravel bikes because the A1, I think, is the hardtail one. And since this is a hardtail, we are gonna do the A mode. Sweet, just leave it there for now. And uh, while we're talking about this, let's talk about the tires I've done on this bike. So these are the Schwabe G1 RSs. It has been nigh impossible for us to get these into stock. We have some in stock right now. If you're looking for a set of G1 RSs, go to thebicyclestation.com. We have very limited availability on these tires right now. I was curious though, so this tire is meant to be, this is like the front direction. And then like, this is the rear direction. And I That's kinda weird. I was wondering why. And if you have an explanation. Comment. Comment, let below. me know. Yeah, I, I did the, the creator's intent way. I did it the way that Schwabe, the Schwabe told me to, but it would be nice to know why. Call? So right now this is a 45 in the bike and this is the manufacturer max tire clearance. Looks like it's reasonable. You could run a bigger. You can but it gets uh, a little bit tight tight. You ready for a weird bottom bracket, Jackson? Oh yeah! So this is a T47. Whoa. I think A. What's with the A? That's So weird. the A is a Cervelo specific thing. So on the non-drive side, it is all the way against the frame. But on the drive side, it is outside of the frame. Let me get a cool that's the goofiest thing I've ever heard. Just wait, you'll see it. Is that going in? Yeah. Yeah. So I have an opinion about this. I actually think that this is an improvement over T47. I'm not a, I'm not a really big T47 fan. I know it's like a whole threaded and it's better than press fit, but I actually don't know if it is. I've noticed that like removing a T47 is not fun. It's kind of, kind of scared. Like I bought all these Abby tools to like try to help with it. But like, look at my finger. Do you see how I'm like holding it against the frame? I just don't think the standard is really like that good. You know, I just, I just don't. I'd prefer press fit over it, to be honest with you. Or just like a normal BSA. I know the normal BSA makes it harder to fit all the stuff. See how I just slipped off? Kind of dumb. We can't even torque it to the right spec because it just falls off. Come on. Get this one going. Hmm. Uh oh. There you got it. Is this a first day situation? Oh yeah, it is. Dang it. Yeah, I was loosening it the whole time. Dang it. Yeah, it was first a, day. That was a first day situation. You were right. Probably should have threaded this side on first. Another first day situation. Always, I guess, at least start these. I always forget to. But yeah, T47, I was complaining about it, and then I literally had the exact problem I was complaining about, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Like, look at how small the flange is. Like, what are we doing? I've had to Dremel one of these out of a bike just so we're all on the same page. You remember that? No. Nah. Oh, yeah, I do. Yep. Uh, the dub bottom brackets are, are solid in my opinion. They're good, a good product. I don't hate it, it's just, it's not as good as people are saying. It's still better, at least half of it's outside the frame. It's still goofy. Goofy's goofy. And that is goofy. We're gonna put dub wide gravel, or I guess this is spacers if you're running a dub wide road crank or a 168 mountain crank. They have the same spindle length. All about the spindle length. Yeah, check it out, spindle length. Click the link below if you wanna learn how to do the spindle length. What, no, yeah. just watch the video. Oh yeah, you could just wa watch. Yeah, yeah. The dub wide road and the dub non wide mountain are the same spindle length. Oh, like man. buy the right thing if you're looking to do. Installed.
Whoa. Teether. That was kind of scary. Why? I don't know. That thing ain't no 48. That is a 48. That thing's like a pizza. Yeah, you, you can do. get a bigger one, I think. You do know all about the pizza. Stuffed crust, dude. Do you really need pedals? Yes. Uh oh. Recently, me and my friend Michael started a new podcast called A Joe and a Pro. Check and, it out. Um, the first episode, we actually talk about like different pedals and why I run enduro pedals on my gravel bike. Why wouldn't you? Well, I think most people wouldn't because they're like downhill enduro pedals, but I think they're really good for gravel. Go, go check that out check so that you can podcast learn. If you want the more in-depth conversation and let me know what you think of that. It's a new thing. Never done a podcast before and uh, Michael has. Michael has interviewed tons of really, really cool cycling people. Um, Not me. Famous cycling people. He, he knows how to run a podcast. Um, I'm just kind of along for it, so. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So this is a 48 teeth chain ring with a effectively a dub wide chain line, dub wide road chain line. I know it's a mountain bike crank, but the chain line is dub wide road. If you're looking to put a 48 tooth chain ring on this Aspero, you can, you just have to use a dub wide crank. Dang. Solid. Mid. It's on the solid side of mid though. I wanted to highlight something. So this is the, this is all hooked up and this is the tell that this is the best handlebar stem routing I've ever seen. You can just freely pull the hose in and out of this bar stem combo. I've never seen one that can do that. It made it so easy to work on. And um, I just wanted to shout that out because that is awesome. And currently I think this is the best integrated bar stem hose combo on the market just due to that fact. Ugliest thing I've ever seen. You're right, it sucks. Darn yeah. Cervelo Aspero, man. This thing. Dumbest bike on the market. Dumbest bike on the market. Yeah, Jackson is so jealous. This is uh, the full build. Literally the most expensive thing we could possibly do to this, I think, or close to it. We've been getting comments about like coming up with like what the actual numbers are on this bike. I don't know right now, but in the future, I'm gonna try to like be better about giving more information like that. Shram Red with a red. carbon uh, stem, which is probably actually heavier, but it looks Dang sick. It. I like doing the all of them match. How it should be. S works power mirror saddle, which I did at one point say I was gonna do a full video on, but I kind of think it would be boring because I just have positive things to say about it. Maybe we'll uh, talk about that, that on the podcast sometime. They don't get, you can't clean them. It looks clean to me. Jackson's still not spotless. Life, so he's, he's a big complainer tonight is what you are. Super sick. It's gonna be like 18. Nah, it's probably more than that. No, it's gonna be more than that. What do you think? Be like 19. Yeah, it's 19 pounds. It's like 19, like flat. With pedals, cages, the computer mount. I think it's solid. My diverge is like 20. So it's lighter than your bike, yeah. Barely. Barely. This is not the high end carbon. I mean, I, I guarantee you Cervelo will eventually come out with a higher end carbon. Asparo, the Asparo 5 is still a thing. And I bet what they're going to do, this is complete speculation, but I bet the reason why we're not seeing a new Asparo 5, I, I bet that remains a racier option. Oh! Like, there's a reason that they, they decided to do this one as its own thing, and I feel like the 5, I hope it's a little different than this, and whenever that one comes out, maybe we'll do a build on that too. Just for me. Just for you. Lastly though, these bikes come with a bag. I love this. This has been a point of, I don't want to say controversy. In Cervelo's marketing photos, there's pictures of bikes like this with the bracket on the bottom. But if you look at the diagram for this bike, the bracket is supposed to go on the inside. So like the technical document and the marketing department are not on the same page y'all. I think it'll work either way. Whenever we got the stock bikes in the mail, I set them all up with the bracket on the outside because I didn't know what to do with it. And I just was like, oh, what is Cervelo doing with it? And I looked at their like marketing posts and it was on the outside. So I just put them all on the outside. I'm hoping that they just tell me after they watch this video. Big bag. Brother. That's it, big bag brother. Big bag bros. Oh, you did the bracket that way? I just explained this. Literally spent like two minutes explaining. Stoked on this bike. 
I'm not. Yeah, let us know if you want one. Let us know if you need anything. Buy stuff at thebicyclestation.com. Buy this bike from thebicyclestation.com. Yeah. Not this one, but like well, the other buy this four. One. But it's not on the dot com. Well, it is. Just DM me. DM Bubby. Yeah, that's how you get the good good. Um, I'll sell it for five bucks. Five bucks. First buyer. I feel like I'm forgetting to say something. Should we go home? Maybe. All right. See y'all. Bye.